even your hobbies must add up into creating a better character that's what i genuinely feel in life you should invest your time in things that you have fun watching or doing as well as things that add layers to your personality i'm going to be talking about stories in today's podcast three of my basketball idols that's what i do outside of youtubing and business i watch and follow a lot of basketball i also watch and follow a lot of cricket but basketball really has my heart for a few reasons i've learned a lot about human minds from that sport i've learned a lot about the human mentality from that sport i've gotten a lot of motivation and discipline in my life through that sport a lot of people cry about how motivation is temporary and discipline is something you should actually be chasing i personally believe discipline is important you get inspired to be disciplined through some of your idols through the stories you listen to and even motivation i feel it's important even if it's temporary i'm a motivational speaker i believe i'm one of the most motivated people on the planet and there are moments where even i need that external motivation from some of my idols i'm going to share some of my learnings from that sport what i've gained from it so that you can gain through this short podcast that will cover a lot of the aspects of the sport beginning with my favorite aspect of sports stories stories of triumph stories of victory we're going to talk about three legendary basketball players the first player is my biggest idol at this point in my life i've spoken about him a lot on the podcast his name is lebron james a lot of people consider him to be the greatest basketball player of all time and i'll tell you why so in basketball up till the time he came he got into the league in 2003 and right before that that whole phase pre 2003 probably since the time basketball began was very much a hero ball based sport that meant that any team that won the championship would usually win because of one star player one player would be significantly better than the other players and that player would usually take the game into his own hands and score all the points in order to make his team win he would be a scorer he would be that guy who throws the ball into the basket now in basketball there's points that's every time you throw a ball into the basket you get two or three points there's assists the person who passes it to the scorer gets an assist and that's also a very crucial part of the game and there's something called rebounds that means if someone's tried to attempt scoring and the ball doesn't go inside the net but it bounces off the rim and it falls back into one of the players' hands that player gets a rebound he's rebounded it off the backboard and he's given it to the other players in his team now up till lebron james came into the league the league was based on hero ball here comes a guy who changes the game He's definitely capable of playing hero ball. He's extremely gifted. He's an absolute beast of a man. He was huge, he was strong and he was fast. But to top it all, he valued the team game much more than the individual game. He was very capable of becoming an individual game legend, but he decided that I'm going to be the guy who elevates my entire team. He focused on his assists. Till he came into the league, the hero of the team would only focus on the points. he was someone who focused on the assists but he was so good that sometimes the team required him to focus on the point scoring as well he's currently third or fourth all time in terms of scoring but he's also high up on the list in terms of assists he's a guy who elevates his entire team and when need be when his team requires him to he goes and scores the points as well that's why he's an idol of mine today i personally feel that teamwork team building the elevation of the people around me is my big goal in life and i study lebron james's leadership mentalities his personal mentality his family life his habits his fitness routine inside out that's what the sport of basketball has given me it's given me one of my biggest idols of all time he's that one guy who if i ever bring on the podcast i'll probably start crying before the podcast happens or i'll cry immediately after it happens I'm very emotional about LeBron James because if you study his story you'll find out that he came up from complete poverty his father had abandoned his mom when his mom was pregnant with him his mom was 16 years old when she gave him birth and brought him up as a single mother they basically had a really tough life he was spotted by a basketball scout uh, playing on the streets they saw talent in him and then groomed him to become a really good basketball player 
but because of the person he was he decided i will be the guy who will assist my teammates much more but because i'm capable i'll also score i'll make my team win lots of leadership lessons that you can learn from this man before we move on to the next player i want to highlight one more aspect of lebron james outside of basketball he's mentored by warren buffet and warren buffet has said that the way this guy is investing right now he's going to become richer than me when he's my age and warren buffet is one of the richest men in the world today lebron james is an intelligent teamwork based human being i'll tell you one more gorgeous thing about basketball it exposes your character the court is so small there's only five guys you're playing with so based on the way a player plays the game you get to know a lot about them as a human being lebron james helps his teammates on the basketball court he's the kind of man who helps his teammates off the basketball court as well his entourage the people around him his business team are the same people who were his bros when he was 17 18 years old and he hadn't entered the league yet he's elevated them to become ceos of companies he's elevated them to become founders of media companies that's the kind of man he is he's fueled them he's given them the contacts he's given them the finances so that they can be well established i think he's been questioned about this at some point and he said that hey you know what i love my brothers but it's also a way of financially securing me if you make your whole team play well it's very likely that your team will win the championship he knows himself very well he's self aware and he uses that self awareness to better his game and to elevate his teammates and on a side note he's 35 years old today and he's still considered in the mvp conversations of the league that means he's the best player in the league or at least one of the top 2 or top 3 best players in the league at the age of 35 most basketballers start declining by the time they're 32 33 years old at 35 this guy is rock solid because he's taken care of himself he's an extremely disciplined man he's disciplined when it comes to his own body and he's disciplined when it comes to the game because keep in mind basketball is one of those games that changes every 10 years he's kept up with the changes he didn't have a three point shot that was really good a three point shot is when you shoot outside the arc in basketball court you know you've seen that big arc so when you stand outside it and you shoot a basket you get three points He wasn't a good shooter. He developed an inside two-point shot first, and when he figured, hold on, there's a lot of other players in this league who are getting better at the three-point shot. He built an insanely good three-point shot. That's the kind of man he is, and I think he did this when he was about 30 years old. Because if he wanted to win the championship, he had to beat a certain man called Steph Curry. That's the second guy I want to talk about. Basketball changes every 10 years because of the players who are playing the game. Steph Curry came into the league in 2009. Before he came in, it was much more about the two-point shot. Working your way inside the court, working your way towards the basket and scoring from near the basket. You had to be strong, athletic, extremely fast to be able to do that. The people who could shoot balls from really far were valued, but they wouldn't get that many chances to prove that their shot is really good. Now here's a guy who comes in as a point guard there's five positions on the basketball court the tallest biggest guy stands on the inside he's called a center then the two shortest guys are the two guards the point guard who's kind of more in charge of assisting the way lebron helped his teammates the point guard is kind of the coach on the court and he distributes the ball to his teammates there's the shooting guard whose main responsibility is scoring and then there's a small forward like lebron james someone who does everything based on their own skill set if they're good at assisting they do a bit of that if they're good at scoring they do a bit of that if they're good at defending they mainly focus on that but let's talk about the point guards this is called the era of point guards in the league because right from 2005 a lot of great point guards started entering the league shorter guys who were very skilled who were very athletic who were really strong for their height who were really fast they would work their way inside the court go near the basket score maybe dunk here's a guy who's not strong who's not very fast he's agile he can change his direction really quick but he's not the most athletic guy his biggest weapon was his three point shot he was an extremely accurate three point shooter 
people look at steph curry today and they think it comes to him naturally he spoken very often about how when he was in high school when he was in college no one valued him because all the other point guards his age were very athletic very strong and here's the skinny guy all he can do is shoot what's he going to do in the league he enters the league in 2009 and a lot of people don't respect him because his game really wasn't up to the mark but he figured that hold on three point shooters don't get that much opportunity to show their skills then that's okay i'm still going to take that chance and i'm going to attempt to shoot more three pointers he was very good at three point shooting he made it even better after he entered the league and because he got so good at three point shooting he made his team win a lot of the games obviously with time he became stronger faster more athletic but he focused on his own strengths his strength was only the three point shot the shot from far away that's all he did he made his team win based on his three point shot his team became so strong with him and his teammate clay thompson who's also an insanely good three point shooter these two guys are considered the two best shooters of all time today the rest of the league realized oh man if we want to beat these guys even we have to build a really good three point shot lebron james built his own good three point shot after steph curry and clay thompson entered the league steph curry changed the mindset of the entire game everyone started taking more three point attempts therefore you know what happened even the tallest guys the center who would stand in the middle of the court he moved to the outside centers have started taking three point shots today because of steph curry it just goes to show that when you're extremely self aware of your strengths and if you have a vision for where you want to take a whole industry where you want to take a whole future you've got to work on your strengths and then trust yourself that i'll be able to do that steph curry has been a huge inspiration of mine he was coming up around the time i was thinking of launching beer biceps that's when his team was winning championships his story inspired me because i thought you know what he was a guy who everyone's doubting he only has one thing he can do well all i could do well was talk i started a fitness channel i didn't have the fittest body i was a very kind of everyday fit kind of guy boy next door what's he going to do right but i'm a good talker and that's what gave me my career you got to trust your strengths if you have a vision if you know where you want to take things you got to trust that vision keep going who knows you might be the next steph curry the league has entered a zone today where it's taking more three point shots than ever before that's opened up the court earlier the game used to be about cutting in going to the rim shooting from near the basket now the games become extremely spread out shooting is much more valued this guy changed the entire game based on his own strengths he made the whole league play according to his rules and someone else before lebron and curry who had made the league play according to his rules was michael jordan i've spoken about the last dance his netflix documentary that's out right now and oh my god that documentary has been giving me so much fire lately it's about his mentality his story what it took yes he was athletic yes he was gifted but here comes the theory of the first rung versus the second rung of gifted the first rung of gifted would be people like lionel messi in football sachin tendulkar in cricket probably someone like magic johnson in basketball LeBron James also falls in that first rung where you're just born with the physicality and the talent needed to succeed. A lot of people who are born with that raw talent, god gifted talent in sports usually don't make it to the top. Some of them do. Some of them who understand, okay, wait, I've been given these abilities, now I need to work hard and ensure that I achieve a good career. They become good. But the icons are always the people from that second rung. who may not be the most gifted yes they have a skill set they have a few strengths but they may not be the most gifted basketball players or gifted businessmen kind of like me i'm not gifted i know i'm good at a few things but there's a lot of people who are better than me you know how you bridge that gap you bridge that gap through relentless hard work that's why we watch sports that's why we watch people like michael jordan do their thing self belief accompanied with insanely intense hard work yes we live in a time where hustle culture is promoted a lot and a lot of people criticize hustle culture they say that you know you shouldn't work so hard you should care about your mental health you'll burn out 
hold up i understand that not everyone is capable of running at lightning speed the way michael jordan did but it is important to put that message out for those few michael jordans out there if 1000 people listen to this podcast there's probably going to be 10 people who will be able to work at the pace of michael jordan and i'm speaking all this shit for you 10 people i'm one of you 10 people i'm just like you i'm not good at everything i'm in that second rung i am born with a few strengths i'm definitely not in the third and fourth rung i wish i was in the first rung but i know at the end of my career when this whole story is over i'm going to be at the top of that first rung based on my hard work that's what i've got from michael jordan he wasn't selected on his high school basketball team but because he was so hungry for success he decided i'm going to work so hard that i'm going to prove everyone wrong i'm going to prove my coach wrong he didn't choose me that's okay i'm going to go and i'm going to become the greatest basketball player of all time he entered college he wasn't as good as his teammates he worked hard to become even better than them he got drafted into the league third not first not second but third that's okay single handedly he pulled his shitty ass team up his team in his first year was pretty bad but single handedly this guy won the rookie of the year so when a new player enters the league they are gauge a lot they called rookies and all the rookies are compared against each other this guy won it it took him 7 years to win his first championship he reached the finals he reached the pre finals didn't happen kept hitting kept going for it kept working hard finally he won he retired from the game of basketball tried his hand at baseball came back lost in the following season his hunger came back he goes and he wins another three championships back to back at the end of his career he won six championships his teammates call him crazy his teammates call him one of the most intense human beings to ever have on your own team he's one of those guys who you really appreciate on your own team but you kind of hate because he was intense with his teammates he wanted to bring the best out of them his sidekick scotty pepin helped him win all those championships he wasn't even in the second rung he's probably in the third or fourth rung lots of talent but definitely not a world class basketball player over the years playing with michael jordan michael jordan brought the best out of him you hear interviews of michael jordan's trainer talk about michael jordan's work ethic and that's when you realize what it takes to actually become legendary he's considered the greatest basketball player of all time even more than lebron james lebron james's career still has another 5 years to go but michael jordan will teach you a lot about what it takes in terms of a mindset not all of us are born in that first rung most of us are born in that second third fourth rung and if you want to get promoted up do a scotty pepin even if you're not a michael jordan at least go up to that juncture of that second and first rung if you are a michael jordan ensure that when your story is over when your career story is over you're considered the greatest of all time the way i described lebron's game and steph curry's game i'm not going to describe michael jordan's game much because he could do everything and he could do everything because he spent a lot of time learning researching each of the teams he was facing researching the best possible ways to become a better basketball player whether it was in terms of basketball in terms of his skill set or in terms of hard work in terms of your fitness in terms of your mentality he did everything possible because he was obsessed with winning that championship go watch the motherfucking last dance you want some motivation in your life you want to know what it takes to be successful go watch the last dance go study michael jordan full of fire full of inspiration just like basketball this is why i watch that sport i hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast i hope it leaves you with some amount of fire and until next time guys try being a jordan try being a lebron try being a steph curry be a game changer be a great teammate and be that guy who ends up at the end at the top of your first rung see you guys later